20 hours until England kick off in a World Cup quarter-final. And who better to take five with? This is Lion's Den with M&S Food. Boom, boom. Welcome back to Lion's Den. We've got, today we've got, got someone special. We've got the Barnsley Beckham Bar. How is it going, brother? John Stone's in the building. Good to see you, mate. Ah, good, 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 good. Listen, this show is all about the fans. We've got a packed show, but we want to get you involved as much as possible. Use the hashtag Lion's Den. Listen, wow. We're going to get you voting on, on a few things later, OK? But listen, as you've seen, we've had a few new guests. You weren't, you weren't the first guest to come into Lion's Den. We've had some cat action going on. Yeah. So top of the show, I want to talk, how is Dave the cat? Um, he's, he's been in a fight. <laughs> scrapping? Yeah, he's been scrapping. I think uh, his friends are getting jealous. And took it out on him. He's been to the vets. Do you know what? It's because he's Instagram famous now. I know, yeah, He's literally. knocking about with the England team. It's outrageous. <laughs> They've gone, oh, I want a bit of that action. But yeah, no, um, he's walking around with a nice little bandage on him. Everyone's got in the spirit, actually, you know, yeah? the, um, the vets even put him in red and white little bandage around his leg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, He's got a name tag. I saw I saw him turn up with like the full, the look, yeah. there he is. I saw him turn up with the full England kit. Got like the cross of Saint Some, George on his put, back. Yeah, and... he's got all sorts now. He's, uh, I think a few people want to take him home. To be fair, we're, we're going to come to that. Don't, don't speak too much. Okay. About that, okay. Don't speak too much about that. Now, when you arrived, okay, obviously these these we've had some, some visitors. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I want to show. The guys at home, this is, this, is, this is a cat man right here. He's like a cat whisperer. He's the David Attenborough of cats. Have a look at this. In the lion's den, do you know what I mean? This is the, everyone wants to be on the show. You're blessed to come after these guys. I'm not a biggest fan of cats either, do you know what I mean? Who's, you're a fraud. I'm not. Stones, I, you're a fraud. Hey, you've got to be nice to everything, aren't you? And Dave came over to us. These guys are <laughs> chilling here. I've got to say hello, but I'm not too friendly with him, do you know what I mean? <laughs> One tried to fight you a little bit earlier. I said, we'll keep him fit, but we've got a big game coming up. Now, every time we come on the show, mm -hmm. we've got to have one guest ask our, you know, our following guest a little question. OK. This is what Kaya Saka had to say. To me? To you. Hopefully it's to you, otherwise something's going horribly wrong. All right. Hi, John. Um, hope you're good, my friend. Um, I just have one question for you, and that is, if you could take Dave home after this, would you do it? Do you know what? Do you know what? After you just, after you just <laughs> slated the nation of cats, yeah. it's, are, you, are you bringing him home? Because Walk said, if we won it, if, 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 you know, best possible thing could happen and we won it, you'd take him home, he'd take him home with you and he'd adopt it. Maybe I'd you'd live at the city, the city ground. Yeah, I'd have to take him home. It's Definitely. good luck, Charles. Yeah. Um... Yeah, from day one, I think he, he was with us, so... Um, Part of the squad. Yeah, I've got to take him on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, get involved in training. Extra man in a rondo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it. Another man at the dinner table, definitely, because he's always there. Yeah? Yeah, but... Um, Better banter than some of the boys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Now, listen, we've got, to, we've got to talk about football, because, like, like we said at the top of the show, Massive, massive, massive quarter-final mm -hmm. against the reigning champs. What's the mood like in camp? Um, quite calm, actually. Um, I think everyone's obviously been with each other so long and um, we know how, how each other play and, and train and everything. And, and I think, you know, the maturity is kind of showing now um, after the situations we've been in yeah. and... and um, things that we've been through together as a team. I think we believe in each other and, and coming off um, a difficult summer into this tournament, you know, with the, with the games that we played and there was a lot of talk and a lot of um, things that were kind of up in the air and I think we settled our nerves pretty early and, and got back to kind it's of our rhythm. Start, yeah. yeah, and um, I think we just got to concentrate on ourselves, you know, not, not worry about other people. I think sometimes we can be... Um, our biggest enemies and our biggest challenge, I suppose, is, is ourselves. So I think we've done really well in, in uh, ticking all the boxes in training and, and making sure we're prepared. And 
yeah, see where it takes us. Makes sense. It seems to be working right now, no yeah. doubt now. Training, does it step up? Or what does it look like in, in kind of the, the two days before a game? Like, does it step up intensely? Does it kind of come down? Is it more kind of you're working on shape and tactical stuff? Yeah, little, um, little fine details now. Um, set pieces, um, which you don't really do at the start of the week. Yeah. And, um, yeah, training kind of comes down a bit. We've done all the hard work and the, the physical side of it. Um, yeah, and it's more about those those kind of little details and how we're going to set up and um, yeah, what the manager wants from us in in certain um, uh, areas of the pitch. You mentioned that that experience of kind of even what's happened in the summer, what Euros, etc. Is it easy? Does that help you not get swept up in in kind of the furore around a game like this? Because there's no escape from the media. There's no escape from the talk. You have got people in pubs. You have got people at home. You have got the media chatting. Yeah. Is it easy to get to block that out, or is it? I think for me, yeah, because I don't see anything. Yeah, you just or I don't, don't read anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm legally blind. Um, <laughs> but um, but no, I I um, I think some some people or if if you look at it and and, and are looking for it, um, you can get caught up in in what's going on. And I think we've got such a good group, and yeah. we we always say it, and um, you know. I think I go back to the flight out when, when you were just chilling with all of us. I think everyone that comes in and, and the lads make good relationships with everyone, yeah. you know, the people that are here and um, everyone's so grounded that we don't have to look outside and, and realise what's um, kind of going on and, and what might, you know, be a speed bump in the road, I suppose. And um, I think we, we've got to do our talking on the pitch and, sure. and everyone has done, I think, especially this tournament, the players that have come off the bench and the, the lads that have started, everyone's been involved and everyone plays such a big part in that. No doubt. Now, one man who definitely won't get swept up in the occasion, who's also very vocal on the pitch, is Pickers. Yeah. Jordan Pickers. So, he, he's someone, we had him on a show and he was talking about how important it was to have that kind of bond with and, and that experience of playing with the back line, because it yeah. seems like you've been playing together f f forever. Yeah. And he's, he's kind of credited his his kind of three clean sheets in a row before this game on how much he has the trust in, in, in I guess, you guys who, yeah. who play in front of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you, would you agree with that? I mean, how, how mm. nice is it to, to hear that from your, your keeper? And does it go the other way around as well, knowing that Pickers is behind you? Yeah. Well, I think um perfect example was the last game. He's, I've gone to uh, make a block and I've got into a a good area, you know, we're, we're big on, on um, uh, our blocks and our shape and how we can help each other out and close down angles and yeah. he's pulled me out of, out of that one with a, a good strong right hand and yeah, I, th I can't remember, I think H said something like we'd played 35, 6 times together and we'd like to know what, what yeah. kind of our stats were but um, that's with picks as well and um, yeah, we've been through through a lot, kind of as a as a unit and whatever partnerships have played, and um, yeah, got some great memories with with all of them. And I guess it helps, obviously, in club level as well. You're playing yeah. with Carl, and so you, exactly. you, you know have have almost doubled it. How important are some of those relationships and that experience of playing together going to be against France? Um, I think um, there's there's not really a change there. Yeah. It, does that make sense? You know, yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, you know how someone is and, and know uh, they've got your back. I think everyone in the England squad will, will fight and run for, for everyone, but um, yeah, that I'm lucky that we I get to play with uh, with Walk so much and um, got, I think, a, a good partnership. It's together. a great partnership. Yeah, it seems <laughs> to be doing all right, man. Yeah. As, as a fan of another help. club, it's quite stressful, in fact. Yeah. <laughs> No, it does help, definitely. Yeah. Um, you just feel comfortable, I suppose, yeah. as well. You've been in situations and know um, how to deal with that. And, um, you know, my attributes will, I suppose, complement him and, and, and likewise with, with what he brings to the game and his presence. And, and that goes for everyone in, in our team. I think everyone's got kind of a different personality when they're on the pitch because, yeah. I don't know. It feels very... It's, it's, it's interesting to see from... I guess like the outside, like obviously you boys are all very cool and chilled and it's like laughing and joking and then you step across that white line and it's like different Something people. Something else comes out, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Um, I, do you know, I, 
I do believe like it's been it's just you're born with that kind of characteristics or um, the way that they you play not with the ball yeah. but I think uh, your mannerisms your kind of demeanour like Jude I've, yeah. I've seen some funny videos of Jude and he's just shouting and the ball's nowhere near him <laughs> but I think it's just like it's how he lives the game yeah. it's, his, it's his personality but then you see him off the pitch and yeah he's, he's the nicest yeah, guy nicest guy yeah chilled. exactly. Um, but again, I think it's just uh, that passion and, and I've always said it, I think we do as a team, just play our hearts out and give everything first of all. Um, a hard work, you know, we'll run for each other, yeah. we'll fight for each other. And I think that's why, especially over these past four years, um, kind of the nation and, and everyone that's watched us or that I speak to um, kind of feels connected to us because we, we, we give that and we, they see kind of traits that are in, yeah, sure. in themselves within us. So. Hopefully it can continue. No doubt about it. And now, we spoke about Pickers being quite vocal. Yeah. He was quite vocal. It's, funnily enough, he's actually... You get two questions today. So we've actually got a question from, uh, from Pickers to you. Okay. I think he's definitely one to put the earphones in for. <laughs> Hi, Stormzy. My question to you is, when you're getting cut through a peat out to finish your trim off, lad? That picture sums picks up, look at him. <laughs> Grinning here to me, he's so proud of himself. When you're getting you... cut throat, Pete, out to uh, finish off your trip, what, talk me through the story of this. Well, me and Picks have the um, same barber, um, but he, he's, he's not come out and we've had to, to jump on a few others, so... Um, Looks well now. Yeah, it's grown out a bit now. And um, But, yeah, Picks, he's always on me about my hair yeah. or... Trying to banter me because I I jump on him. <laughs> so and, you're just uh, giving it back. Basically. Yeah. So when I see that he's got a haircut, I'll say, "Oh, let's have a look." Like, you know, spin around, <laughs> show me the back, and I'll I'll start gasping or something <laughs> at, at the back of it, and he's like, Whoa, "What? What's wrong? What's wrong?" So yeah, I know why he's asked me now. <laughs> oh, okay, it makes sense. Yeah. He's, he's just getting a bit of payback. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what? You're a bit of a popular guy on on the lines then because. Am I? Yeah, bro. Because Jack actually asked Bakai, asked Calvin actually. Yeah. He's like. Calvin, why don't you speak to him anymore? You're too busy man-marking Stonesy. <laughs> talk, talk about where this has come from, this bromance. Um, I don't know, actually. Because Cal said, you know, we were injured together, you know, yeah. we were working, and then Jack's response was, you was injured for about a week, so don't count. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it probably started from that. I think as soon as he came, yeah. um, and, I, and I knew that he was coming, yeah. I kind of, um, you know, asked him if he needed anything or kind of showed him about or yeah. told him who to go to and who to see um, within our club. And, yeah, it, it's just been... I, I suppose it's not easy for someone when they come into a club and, yeah. and obviously, he knew me, Walks, um, uh, Phil, Jack and... and uh, I'm missing someone out, but, ben yeah. White, I think, from, from yeah. these days, yeah. So, um I just, just wanted like to a, make a him feel comfortable, yeah, figure, yeah. and um, it, we just hit off, I suppose, you know. Um, just something that clicked and yeah. we have a good laugh together. We, yeah, we spend a lot of time together, About Call say, of two, Duty and stuff like that. Uh, two Yorkshire boys, I thought we'd just be talking about Yorkshire gold and yeah. where, where you put the tea bags. <laughs> what, what, what do two boys from Yorkshire knock about and chat about? Uh, that's a good question. You know what? I Probably think not best for a show. Yeah, yeah we just talk rubbish, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense. Well, listen, talking about Yorkshire, I know, I know, I know you, you're a very proud Yorkshireman. Yeah. Okay, so I think it's only time that we, we send you back, back to Barnsley. Okay. Yeah, and I think you'll find, I think it lives down there in the freezing cold. Enjoy. Yes, Josh, I am down here in the freezing cold and John will definitely recognise this hallowed turf behind me. It is, of course, Oakwell, home of his beloved Barnsley FC. And right now it looks like I am the only person here in the stadium, but I'm actually not because I've been joined by a couple of familiar faces. In you come, boys. Uh, Ronnie Branson, of course, former academy manager, who saw John through the ranks, went from 8 to about 18. Uh, and, of course, Bobby Hassel, who actually played with John in the first team, didn't you? And you're now the academy manager. Um, but, guys, before we speak to you, usually we like to spring surprises on these players. But this isn't such a surprise to John, is it? Because I think he's already spoken to one of the two here. So, John, you sort of had an idea about what was going on today, didn't you? I did, yeah. They've dropped me. They've dropped your... The, me in it, I suppose. 
<laughs> they have. Um, but hopefully they're going to be here to dish some dirt uh, on you, John, for here, of our, here uh, on Lion's Den. Um, Ronnie, first of all, of course, you were um, the academy manager when John was coming through. Uh -huh. Just first of all, what was he like as a kid? Nightmare. Absolute <laughs> nightmare. No, joking apart, he was a great lad to, uh, to coach and, and come through the academy. Uh, but John had a very wicked sense of humour as he got older. And he was very good at doing uh, impersonations of people, especially staff members. I don't know if he remembers <laughs> this. We'd walk in the chair dressing rooms oh, no. and he'd be holding court and the team would be <laughs> laughing and giggling because John was doing impersonations of certain staff members at the time. Very funny. Very John, funny. John, have you got any impersonations you want to give us now of any of your teammates or anything? No, I'm all right. I'm <laughs> I've never seen right him shy. <laughs> That's what we do here, drop you right in it on Lion's Den. Um, John, I've also heard you, you know, as Ronnie says, a little bit of a joker. Uh, did you go and put on the mascot's costume at any point, maybe to keep warm when you were a scholar? Did you enjoy doing that? The Toby Tech, the Toby Yeah, plenty Jack. of times. <laughs> plenty of times. I think, I think actually, it? Ronnie... Uh, it, Ronnie's walked in on us putting that on a few times, 100%. Oh, actually, I think we even took the... the Toby tight head down into our changing room. This is when Bobby was playing, so if Bobby would have seen us, oh my, <laughs> he, he wouldn't have been happy. <laughs> <laughs> We'd walk in the, in the changing rooms and Johnny would be there with a big Toby tight head on and laughing and giggling and, oh, get it off quick, quick, go. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. Um, obviously, you, Ronnie, saw John sort of grow as a footballer. Uh -huh. When did you know he had something special about him? Did he stand out straight from the off or not really? Well, John played in quite a good squad. We had quite a good squad then. A few of the lads have gone on to make out of that squad have made really good careers in championship in the football league below that. Uh, I think when John got to about uh, 15, 16, if you remember, John, we had to play you down, I think, a year when you were 14 just because you hadn't physically developed enough. Yeah. But then John came back yeah, I remember. big and strong and huge. I think he'd been in the grow bag that summer. And then we knew we had a, <laughs> a real player on our hands. <laughs> Uh, my, my friend and colleague, Mark Burton, and I put together a coaching programme that I think uh, really suited John's style of play, sort of playing out from the back, that sort of thing that, that John brought into straight away and it really suited him and it suited us. And he never really looked, looked back since then. And John, just how integral were challenges like that, sort of playing with, with the years below you in, in terms of getting to, to where you are now? Um, yeah, Matthew, I think it's... it's um, something at the time that you think that it, you, you're done, you maybe um, might not get a chance to play with your age group again, but um, looking back now, it was, it was the right thing to do. You know, I was um, not physically de uh, developed as, as my teammates were, and um, I suppose that period of time that um, I had playing with the, the year below was... Um, Probably a, a point in your career where you'll look back and think, I, need, I needed that. Um, it probably might have made me. And um, as, as Ronnie said, I, I was think I was in a, in a grow bag for the summer and came back a, a bit bigger and stronger and, um, you know, went on from there. But that, that um, take that to one side, I suppose, that's um, credit to, you know, Ronnie and, 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 and Mark and all my coaches that, that see those kind of situations and um, recognise that someone needs that, that extra bit of time or extra bit of help and, and um, you know, thanks again, Ronnie. <laughs> and, and Ronnie, that is also, you know, something that other kids when they're younger can, can look to and go, it doesn't matter if you're necessarily yeah, not 100%. the right build or not yeah. right physically ready because it can then happen. Yeah, I think lots of uh, kids and, and parents to an extent might see things like that as a negative. Mm. But it's only done for the right reasons. It's to give lads, you know, the opportunity to sort of step back a little bit while they do develop, and then they can really kick on, like, like as you know, John's done, obviously. So it's uh, it's not always a negative. It's it's never a negative, but it's just getting people to realise that it, it is for the, you know, for for the good of the player. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Bobby, Ronnie's described what John was like as a kid. Can you please explain to us what he was like when he made that step up into the first team? Was he the joker that he was as a child? No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to a really experienced dressing room, to be fair. Um, really quiet when he first came in. Making teas and coffees on, on the bus and on their way trips. 
what I will say about him, though, as soon as he, he went onto the training ground um, or into a, a game, his confidence came out and his true personality, you could see straight away what a top player is going to be. Uh, what was he like to play with at that time? Very composed on the ball for a young player, very calm in possession, uh, athletically fantastic. Uh, and as I say, you could see from 17, 18, he was going to be a top international Premier League player and he's, he's gone on and done far above probably what everyone expected. And are there any pit, like memories on the pitch that stand out for you? Any stories of John Stones? Uh, I remember his first goal. Uh, I remember him taking my shirt and playing ahead of me. Uh, <laughs> And I remember him coming off with cramp, as he generally did when he was a young player. Um, and I had to go on for him that game on his debut. But he was great, we, you know, to see him score on his debut for Barnsley. Um, uh, it was fantastic and it was a memorable day because I had to go in goal that day. So there was a lot of different memories around that uh, game <laughs> at Rochdale. Well. John, John, what are your memories of that game? It seems like one that had a, a lot going on in it. Yeah, no, the first, I think, 10 minutes I think I lost every ball, to be honest, and then um, kind of grew into the game. My nerves got the better of me, and um, yeah, it was it was a massive step up for me, um, scoring, and I think uh, a lot of nervous energy and stuff like that. But um, yeah, the step up, especially in the second half, physically had, had hit me, and, and then I realised, you know, I, I had to uh, um, really step up on my fitness and get used to this and the demands of the game and. As Bobby said, he, <laughs> I think we were winning and then we got our keeper sent off. Um, and then I got sub for, for Bobby, he's gone in, gone in the sticks. <laughs> oh, I love that so much. That's a, gr that's a great debut, it is a great debut. Um, and Bobby, what has someone like John Stones, where he is now playing for England at a World Cup, what sort of inspiration has he been to all the young footballers in Barnsley that want to make it as a professional? Well, it's fantastic for this little town uh, up north population only 100,000 that they can emulate someone like John Stones who's come through the academy he's had a great pathway here Ronnie spoke about his career while he was here and, and the steps he had to do to, to get where he was and he's all over the walls within the academy and reception and he's, he's there for everyone to look when they come in and say that could be me one day Absolutely. Um, and Ronnie, we've spoken about what John was like as a kid, but even now you guys are still in touch with him and, and he's had a big impact and been really supportive in both of your personal lives as well, hasn't he? Yes, he has. Uh, just on that, Olive, we, we got John back to the academy uh, to do a, a chat with the lads a few years ago to talk to the younger lads and John were fantastic taking questions from the audience and all, all the young kids and their parents could, could speak to John direct and it, we really appreciated that. Uh, and on a personal level, uh, I got a, a cancer diagnosis a few years ago. Uh, John, one of the first people on the phone to me asking what he could do to help and things like that, which at the time and still do really appreciate. So, so thanks for that, John. Oh, thank you very much, Aww. John. That's a lo lovely story and obviously you know, that sort of emulates what a sort of character yeah, yeah. John Stones is. Um, guys, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on Lion's Den. Yeah. I hope you've enjoyed sort of chatting to John, uh, obviously live in the sunshine in Qatar, which is always lovely when we're stood here in Coates. But just <laughs> finally, thank you. We've got one final thing, John, um, because this is a limited edition Barnsley shirt, all in red, which, John, if you don't come and take this, I'm going to nick it because I actually really <laughs> like this. Um, <laughs> they wore it once, and it's actually got your name on the back and your number from when you started no as way. an academy boy. So next time you come back to Barnsley, this will be here waiting for you if I haven't taken it home already. Uh, John, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure okay. to chat to you. All the best, you. John, lad, tomorrow. And all of Barnsley are going to be your biggest thank supporters you so much. tomorrow when we take on France. So good luck and back to you guys in Qatar. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Pleasure, Liv. Pleasure, guys. That is a glowing report. Apart from wearing the mascot's head uh, yeah. in the change room, <laughs> everything, everything, was, everything was perfect. Yeah. No, I, I'm a bit speechless, to be honest. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. I mean, yeah, it was, yeah. It's not, I mean, Barnsley's obviously where your career started, and those people obviously helped you so much in, in terms of your football career, and I guess it's, it was the start of your path to here. And yeah. Barnsley was also the start of your England journey. You got called mm. up for the under-19s. Then under 20s, yeah. under 20s World Cup, and I've actually gone back and I've dug into the footage to find a fresh face. No way. Come, come, take a look uh, at this. <laughs> ah, here we go. It's a great privilege for all of us. Is it a video? As I say, every time I, oh, I speak to, to you, um, 
it's just a, a great privilege to just put an England shirt on or, and come in and play in a World Cup. It's just a fantastic occasion for us all. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Is it could have been last week. Doing me over here. <laughs> I mean, listen, like that is like a fine wine, eh? Yeah, like a fine wine. Like then milk. to now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it's 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 incredible the journey that you've been on in football and, and yeah. like they said, you know, a town of a hundred thousand people to create, you know, a, a centre raft that's played sixty four times for England. Yeah. Does it still feel the same as when you got your call up for the under twenties World Cup to yeah. pull on that shirt sixty four times later? Yeah, no, it's um, it's, oh, it's strange. It's hard to put into words. To be yeah. fair, you know, when when I, uh, I I keep going back to it, but when I wasn't in the team, I think oh, just over a year or something, and wasn't um, getting played at, at club or or here, and you know, I, I never thought I might put an England shirt on again, and um, so when I came back I, and I fought for everything to get to yeah. get back in. Um, in this position, and I, uh, and you know, I didn't say to myself because I never would, but and I, I thought I've got to cherish every moment and, yeah. and uh, literally never take anything for granted because I've kind of been on both both ends of the scale yeah. and and um, yeah, literally from where I'm from and and my mum and dad, um, all my family that kind of see me play and and have been on the journey with me. I think it's more real for them. When yeah. I'm in it, it's a bit different, but um, yeah, I try and do it for all them and, and see how proud it makes them. And um, yeah, I try to give my give my all for the shirt, and I, I will as long as I keep getting called up. No doubt, and I'm sure it's one of the first names on the team sheet. Every Our fingers season. crossed. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. The team's not out yet, but I'm sure you'll be absolutely fine, brother. Don't worry. Uh, now, this part of the show is where. We get some fans involved all the way from around the world. Yeah. Okay, bring them into the screen and cool. they can ask you questions. So this okay. is Fans Ask Questions. <laughs> so three fans in Fans Ask Questions. In the Lions Den, welcome. How are you feeling? Yeah, all good, thank Very you. Very well, thank you. Very That's excited sweet. to be here. Excellent. Legendary. OK, perfect. So I know you all have a question for Stonesy. So, Michael, I'm going to come to you first. Um, hi, John. Very nice to meet you. Obviously, you're a centre-back who too. is very good on the ball and has scored a few nice goals. If you were converted into a centre-forward tomorrow, which tier of English football do you reckon you could play in? It's a good question. Striker Stonesy, yeah? I'm saying Premier League straight away. Yeah, it's big target man up top. <laughs> yeah, big target man. Um, I only say that, or I'll say it because of who who I've played with, um, who I've played against, uh, day in day out. Um, I don't think I've I'm any, anywhere as good as them, but I've I've definitely learned yeah. a lot off them. So uh, yeah, maybe maybe not at the top of the Premier League, but I'd like to think I'd be in the Prem. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you, you learn in a right now, so it's, it's, here, it's, not, it's not bad. It's not, it's not a bad teacher. Yeah, exactly. Maybe Barnes. OK, perfect. Listen, question. Prem, maybe Barnes. I'll go back there, no problem. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> take it. I don't know if that's shade or not at the moment. Let's go. We'll kick it off right now. Uh, Kilichi, what's your question for Stonesy? Uh, you're right, John. There are so many great players in right, the World mate. Cup this year, but what makes a player world-class for you? Oh... Good question. Uh, I'd have to say um, someone's ability, um, someone's, a play, well, a player's um, history, I suppose, what, what they've done in the game as well and, and how they've reacted in big moments. Um, and someone that's consistent as well. You know, you've got to be consistent to uh, perform at the highest level and, and keep turning out these things and, and, and you know, world-class players have unique abilities that um, they execute things really well all the time and um, but do it consistently as well. Obviously, strikers get a lot more um, uh, bad press, if you want to say it like that, for not scoring, but it's the hardest thing in, in, um, in the game to do. So, you know, the, the top, top players, Harry Kane, for one, he's uh, 
goal machine and he's consistent at it and he's and he's still looking to improve. So, you know, I hope I've answered your question the best I can there. Yeah, brilliant. That makes sense. It's a detailed, detailed answer. Great question as well. What's your question for John Stones? Hi, uh, John. I hope you're good. Um, so, my question is, we've all seen the England camp looks really close and really tight in it. But I just wanted to ask, have you become closer to anyone in the squad that you might not have known so well before outside of England camp? Oh, good question. Um, yeah, definitely. I think the amount of um, the amount of time that we spend with each other. Um, I've been here quite a few years now, so it's um, it's good when I when I, I meet back up and see the lads that I've not not seen, and I'm very close with um, quite a lot of players, and it's, I think what I've had over. Um, Quite a long period of time now. Is a is a is a is a strong bond with Kieran Trippier. Um, I feel we don't get time to spend outside of uh, England or when he's obviously he's at Newcastle now. So um, that's difficult. But yeah, when we're here, we 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 do spend time together, and and um, I think that's another unique part of our squad that everyone um, can kind of switch back on and switch back being into this yeah. this team and. Um, spend loads of time as if they've not be, even been apart. Perfect. Great question. Great answer. Trips will be buzzing to hear that, would he? Yeah. <laughs> what a guy. Nice one, guys. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you guys. so much. Enjoy the game tomorrow. And hopefully, listen, we'll get that win and we'll get you back on. Pleasure. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Cheers. Nice one. Well, now, we asked you guys to send in your questions for Stones and you didn't disappoint, so I'm going to run through a few of them right now. Ah, uh, first one is caught at uh, Mad Season. At my first Barnsley game, John was still in our youth system. So my question is, what's one thing you learnt coming up through the ranks at Oakwell that's helped you throughout your career? Always proud of you. Um, uh, discipline and definitely um, being humble. I think we, we got a lot of jobs to do as... Okay. Um, as, as a youth player and uh, might have been mopping the floor. Um, I remember I was still, I'd, I had all the staff boots to clean and I was playing in the first team. So I remember after the game yeah. that I'd just played and I'd grab all my uh, manager's boots, go and clean them yeah. and, and help the kit man out and things like that. So um, yeah, I'd have to say that. Definitely wherever I go, I respect everyone's kind of role and um, responsibility that, that makes our life easier as players. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Great answer. Uh, Cooper Naldo, who inspired you to play football? Um, mum and dad. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. Mum and dad. Remember, even now, if I ask my mum and dad to go, if they want to go to the you know, local field or yeah. let's go and have a kick about, they'd be up for it. So, yeah. That's class. Yeah, definitely then. So super supportive in, in yeah. your career. Always oh. knew that that's what you wanted to do. Yeah. Um, never doubted me, even when I did myself. Yeah. Um, Followed me everywhere around the world and, and um, yeah, got me into it at the start and still going. Perfect. That's what we like to hear. Now, Ozzy uh, has written all side, five aside team, question mark. Oof. I know, stuck you right on the spot there because it's tough. Five aside. Yeah. You got to think of five aside. It's not 11. So you see, yeah. I'm thinking pure flair. Just players that I played with. Can I do Any? that? Any. Do you, do you to, yeah. I'll, I'll make it easier. Yeah. Oh, no, it's bad. I made it harder. Yeah, but so you just opened up the whole thing Pandora's box. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to do players that you just played with? No. Okay, that's too close, yeah. right? <laughs> People are going to be calling you, Ted Stones. You left me out the fire most. <laughs> exactly. Um, all right. Um, keeper, that's always a hard one. I'll put Joe Hart in there. I love Joe Hart. Yeah? Yeah, Joe Hart. Um, go Bobby Moore. Got a Pele in there. Has to. Um, oh my goodness. I know this is tough. You got a bit of time, don't worry. Messi. Yeah. Big well, Messi is a fan. Team. You Messi over Ronaldo. Yeah? yeah. One more. Are we doing out and out striker? Should we? I think out and out. Just, just, just. 
Just throw some on just there. Just throw some goals in there. I mean, not that there's not enough goals in there with Pelé no, and I know, Messi. I know, exactly. <laughs> just more. Um, oh, I'm on the spot. Someone in the England squad, God, if you've got to pick someone for a 5 0 team. Phil, why not? He's still got time, hasn't he? Yeah. He's got time to get to yeah. the, where there was going. I'm a bit older now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in fact, I'll put myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you want to play with him. That <laughs> makes sense. Oh, that's class. All right. It's a, it's a frightening 5 0 team, yeah, by it's the a way. Good one. Jeez. Um, Jade Deshaux has written Who is the player that you most admired when you were younger? Oh, I, I was a big, uh, well, still am, big Beckham fan. I loved yeah. Beckham as a kid. Um, we got to, to meet him and I was... I was about to say, how was that? Yeah. You bit starstruck? Bit, yeah, definitely. I've never felt like that before, to be fair. Yeah. And I didn't really know, like, they said, uh, you know, uh, Beckham's coming to watch yeah. training, wants to meet you all. And this was at the start of the session. Yeah. And you think, how much? Yeah, no, I, I kept looking over to the to the the tunnel, like dugout bit, where he was gonna come out. Thinking, you're doing Ramona's here? every yeah. two seconds. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, I was a huge Beckham fan just yeah. from what he did, and um, oh, I don't know who else really. I'm trying to think of someone that maybe I played with. I mean, Beckham's Beckham's yeah, up there. I mean, like, it's, hard, it's, hard, it's hard to top Beckham in, <laughs> in terms of like he's a national hero. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll take it. Okay, and um, in fact, you know what? We asked we asked the viewers to name the cat. A viewer suggested Bobby Moore as the cat's name. Oh really? And you just put Bobby in the fighter side team, so it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Martin <laughs> Martin Arnick, enough catcher. Uh, Martin Arnick, who would win in a crossbar challenge from the whole squad? Oh. Like, I think you... Trent would be up there. Yeah. Um... Phil maybe be up there as well. I think Trent just he's he's, he's just got the he's, he's got, got a good clean yeah, yeah. clean strike. I'd have to say Trent probably. Trent. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. That was yeah. great, guys. Thank you very very much for sending your questions. Some great answers. Some interesting answers. Now. Starting to get serious. Listen, you've had a little bit of a practice. Yep. Are we on the dance? It's almost time for sharpshooters, all right? Yeah. I want to. I want to go through the, the leaderboard because I want to. I want to know where you think you'll come. Okay. Because this okay. is. It's intense. We've had two zeros. Yeah. Pick we kept a clean sheet. <laughs> but that's about. Pick's a, got nothing. Pick's got zero. Hit the keeper's hand. Done. So I know. I, yeah. I want you to give him some stick. Marcus right. on zero as well. I'm very surprised that Phil. Phil came in and it, and and I, I, don't, I don't want to say it, but he, he did crumble. Um, Did he? Yeah, at the top we've got Madders 80, nearly a perfect score, bro. And I see every single inner target missed the 40 and hit the 20. Codes 85, so solid, very hard to beat. Yeah. And Ramers just came in and just lit the place up with a 91. Right, okay. It was frightening. So, where are you thinking you're coming? Champions League spot? I've got to come past the H, yeah? Wyatt, and Walks, yeah, on a 71. I'd like to come above that. Yeah, okay, solid. Do you, you, you want to break through into those? Yeah, top five. Top five. Top five. Oh, okay, listen, yeah. we'll, listen, while we get ready, while we get ready, enjoy the highlights of what has been an incredible week of sharpshooters. We'll see you over there. <laughs> In three, two, one. Whoa. <laughs> you wasted your own time, bro. Go on, let's go. Nah. This is not a good start. Wow, we, we might be heading for something special here. You hit the keeper's hand, you're done, you're back to zero. No pressure. Oh, oh no! What did he hit? 20 on it? Hit a lot of things apart from targets, let me tell you that. OK. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah? Thanks. No! This is technique. Oh, wow. There was, that's some frightening arrows there, by the way. Five. What do you mean five? You said nine Three, seconds, big man. Two, one. No, what do you mean? You were telling me. You can't go from nine, nine to four. 91. 91. I have to say. You said you were going to the top of the leaderboard. I did. And you I'm did. I'm so disappointed not in that lie. one there. Welcome back to Sharpshooters. Stonesy, yeah. how are you feeling? Now you're here. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready for it, to yeah. be fair. You're in the lines, Declan. You, you had a practice. You know, yeah. you know exactly what I'm talking about. Let me, let me explain the rules very, very quickly. <laughs> Okay, what were you laughing at the bump back for? This is Lions Den official stash. Stop laughing. Hey, uh, this, I tell you, you put this on eBay, you're getting a pretty penny for it. Uh, All right, yeah. <laughs> one, one dart per target. Yeah. Okay, 
this this whole thing is one target. If you hit the five, you can't then go back and get the ten. Yeah. Go for glory. Go for the forty. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you hit the keeper's hand, you are out. Done. You're back to zero. You're with Marcus and you're with Pickers. You have thirty seconds. Okay. Unlimited darts. If you miss here, you can go back and go. Oh yeah. I can, okay. Perfect. Yeah? All right. Yeah. Yeah. We good. I'm happy with that. Uh, this is, this what, is, is it spray? Yeah, of course it's spray <laughs> then. This is what we're talking about. All right. I'm like a less likeable Mike Dean. <laughs> you can't get him chomped for that. <laughs> OK. Right. Your 30 seconds well, starts. <laughs> Just shambles over it. Your 30 seconds starts in three, two, one. <laughs> Focus. Oh, it's a great start, by the way, with the five. In the ten, wow, these darts are frightening. I'm going to stop talking because I feel like I might be distracted. <laughs> so I can do that one again. You've got 20 seconds. You're good. Stones, you don't fall apart here on me. You've got 20 seconds. There we go. You could always come back to it. There we go. Perfect. Is that I'm going to give you the five for that. You've got 10 seconds. You've got two targets in 10 seconds. Now we go for the last one. Five seconds. Oh, I was nervous on that one as well. I tell you what, when you leave it late, we've seen it before. It happens, right, so that's 15, that's 30, that is 55, that's 65, that is 71. <gasps> 71. Hold on, that's, that's on Am the... Am I right? My maths is being... That's on the line Triple there. checked. Hang on, was that... Did we give you the five there? I mean, I would. But okay. it's up to you. So I'm going, I'm going to, I'm going, I'm going to VAR. If it's on the line, we give it, which means... That's 75, I'm pretty sure. OK, I'm going to give you the 75 and we'll work Thank it you. out afterwards. As you can see, we've had a, a good friend come up to the show. Eric, Eric Dyer told us that Juan Stones, is, yeah. is there a reasoning behind that? Uh, he just calls me Juanito Piedras, which is John Stones in Spanish. <laughs> we'll take it. There yeah. we go. OK, well, you are lucky enough to go. You, well, you said you wanted to be above yeah, Walt, I'm happy Maguire with and Kane. Yeah. So Juan Stones. <laughs> For the 75, I think, we're going to put an asterisk next to it. OK. <sighs> listen, listen. I think it was on there. Uh... It was the five. I have to give you the five okay. just on the white line. Stonesy, absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Good luck in the game. Thank you. The whole country's rooting for you. And guess what? We are back tomorrow with a special match day show. Listen, you're not going to want to miss it. If you're not excited, I don't know how. Okay, guys, listen, pleasure. We'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy it. This has been Lions Den with MS Food.